Hey everybody, it's Luke here from Luke's Power Art and welcome to another episode of Learning from the Masters. Today we're looking again at Rob Liefeld and this episode is called Death by a Thousand Lines because Rob famously was known for drawing a lot of detailed rendering and cross-hatching on all of his artwork. Today, Rob has actually moved himself back to a more simplified rendering style. However, when we look back at Rob in the 90s, what we see is a much more detailed approach to rendering and a lot of line work, a lot of cross-hatching and some really beautiful artwork. But also remember the impact that the Inca has on Rob's artwork. Here is Danny Mickey, one of Rob's longtime Incas, Jonathan Sabal, another one of Rob's longtime Incas, Dan Fraga stepped in to do this cover. Stephen Platt, one of my all-time favorite artists, inked this, and Rob inked himself. So let us begin our study of the rendering of Rob Liefeld. So here we have X-Force issue 9 cover by Rob Liefeld, and I'm pretty sure this was inked by Dan Panosian. Uh, I love Dan's inks over Rob's artwork here. I think he has a really tight inking style. Um, and so what I want to draw our eye to is a few key things that you can see in this piece that are Rob Liefeld's signature things, okay? Now look up here on the gun, okay? On this gun up here, you'll see this little rendering technique here. You'll see the same rendering technique uh, on this bracelet here. This band around the arm, you'll see it over here. You'll see it there. You'll see it a few different places. Let me show you what that is. Okay, what you're looking at there is a dark point here. Okay, like that. And then you've got a little bit of lighting underneath. So for example, if it was shaped like that, a little bit of lighting underneath. And then you have these little spiky bits here let me explain to you what this is. This is actually demonstrating how darkness goes to light. Okay, so if you have the darkest point there, usually gradually lines like that and the lines gets more spaced out and that, that is how you'd show the gradient of darkness to light. But if you just want to show something as almost like there is darkness here, but it very quickly gets to light. So it's very quickly lit up here. You use these little spikes here, almost like a shorthand language to demonstrate that's what you're dealing with. So, so if you look on this bracelet down here, and I'll zoom in. This bracelet here, what you're actually looking at is all right, a bracelet like this. Let me just get my inking pen back. Inking pen, good. The bracelet looks like this, okay. And you've got the light source. It's hitting the bracelet right in the middle. And so it creates this section where there's no darkness, right? And so what Rob has done, he's created complete darkness over here, right? Like that, complete darkness there. But then there's also a light source coming from over here, hitting this edge, which is like an edge light source. And so when Rob does the darkness over here, it's only like that because there's still this light source hitting the edge to give it a 3D look. But you can't have black to white with no gradation, with no sort of transition. And so he does a few lines like that. And then he puts in these little spikes like that, which show the transition from this dark section to a section of light. They're almost replicating sun rays, like if you did a sun thing like that and the sun rays go like that from the sun, it's almost like here is a sun in here and the light ray is going 
like that. And so these little lines are sort of showing what that is. So I'll just get rid of that out of the way. And I'll draw those lines again. Okay, like that. And you can see he's also done up here and like that. Okay, and down here as well. And there's a little bit of that there. Now, now you can see that light source hits the middle. The light source doesn't hit this part here. It's a dark part. This is a dark part in shadow as well. But then you have these lines, which I can sort of, I'll go back up here and I'll show you again. These lines that, <clears throat> excuse me, you have like here, darkness there, line, 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 and then gradual spacing gets wider and wider. So it shows it's transitioning from darkness to light. The light would be up here, a light source there. That's a light bulb for those of you who are wondering what that signifies. There's the wiring inside of it. So that's the light source. And that's one of his techniques. Now he also makes it look like this though. You may have seen him do this. He'll do this. There'll be an under bit like that, which I showed before. But then he'll just do this sort of, like this, which on its own, it kind of looks like waves, like that. That's also this, okay? But he does the waves, or the stippling as it's sort of known, when it's coming directly out of darkness. So if you have a dark point and some light, like that, you can just do little lines like that. But if you have a dark point and you're coming straight out of it, that's the way you do this sort of waving, stippling sort of pattern. And then you do underlighting, which is this sort of thing here underneath, which is something that Stephen Platt was very famous for, where he'd always do a muscle like that. For example, he'd do black across here, you'd have the under lighting thing there, and then you'd see this sort of thing cross hatching on top of the muscle. Now, I blurred it instead of erasing it. There we go, erased it now. So there's one of Rob's techniques. You can see this technique here. He's doing the same thing here. This is on Cable's metal arm, where he's trying to show uh, there's the arm there, like that. And he's trying to show uh, a sense of roundness. And so he's done his dark section like this. Okay. And then he, there's a light source coming from this direction. And there's a light source coming from that direction. So he's created two light sources to make it look 3D. And then he does some gradation lines to show that it gradually goes from dark to light. But on this bottom section where it's more of an immediate light, he's done this stippling sort of wave effect. You see that? So this is in many ways, this is a gradual coming up to light. This is a more harsh light. This is a more stronger light um, coming in here, which is why there's not as much gradual change from darkness to light. It's more immediate. And that's what these little stippling points really mean. Uh, if we take a look down here, you'll see that Rob uses this here. So when he's trying to show that there's a muscle edge, but it's not a very deep muscle. So this, this darkness up here on the bicep is very deep. It's showing that the bicep is very uh, broad. has a lot of shape to it. Down with these other forearm muscles, they don't stand out as much as a bicep. The, the definition is less. And so when he's drawing this, and I'll come back over to my section here. When he's drawing this, for example, if you've got a forearm like this, right? There's a, a wrist, like we did this thing over here. A forearm like that, you've got a bicep coming in there, right? You basically got a few muscles that look like this, a couple of muscles that will come out there. They don't protrude from the skin very much. So what he does, if we go back and have a look, he does this technique, right? Where he does 
a little bit of darkness, maybe a line or two, and then he just does that, right? And over here, the similar thing. He might just do a little, a little bit of a line there, and then he'll do that. And he will do this rim lighting, which is another point and that I want to make out. One of Rob's main things he does that other artists don't do a lot of is this rim lighting. See how there's a skin-colored gap where the darkness is here, but there's a gap. It doesn't go right to the edge of the bicep. Down here, there's this light here. It's rim lighting, meaning edge lighting. If you ever did lighting in films, it'd be called a rim lighting because it lights up the edge of an object to make it look more 3D. Here you have this right here, this edge lighting. That's one of Rob's signature things as well. So he uses that alongside with this technique. And I'll show you what that looks like. So he is using, uh, yeah, so he will use something like this. Like that. And he may go like this. And he keeps this, this edge, right? This edge is sort of kept free. And there's another one down here. Like that. And up on the bicep, he does a lot darker because it's, give that edge there. It's a bigger muscle. So it has more shadow working on it. And I think he doesn't do a lot of line work on this one. He just does a bit of that. So, and he's doing a mixture here. So he does this stippling effect. And then he just does some lines like that, some vertical lines like that, which is, they are there to show shadow, but it's not as dark a shadow as a complete black shadow. So have a look over here. See, so it's black, dark shadow here. And then you've got these lines, which are demonstrating we're going from dark here up into a light section up here. Right, here's your, here's your lighting point here. Here's your lighting point there. You can see the colorist has tried to do a bit of that. This is 90s coloring, so it's not as obvious. Early 90s coloring. But you can see he's using these techniques to basically do this. And I'll show you it in a way here. Right? He's almost creating a line around all of his muscles like that. See? Here's the bicep. It's like he's creating a line around the arm, like that, where the lighting hits the edge to make it look 3D. But he doesn't draw these lines because that'll look weird. He just does a little bit here, a little bit there, right? So he kind of does a bit here, and then he would basically, you know, erase this section out, and then he'll do a little bit down here, and then you'd erase this section out here, and he might do a little bit here, and then he'll also do a little bit there. Okay, so what he's actually doing is, he's saying, here is a muscle, right? And I'll, I'll pick another color. Let me just pick red for now. So what he's saying is, here is a muscle, right? There's a muscle, here is a muscle. But I want to show just the edges, because you know, if you draw the muscles like that, it looks like the person has no skin. And the person has to have skin, unless of course they're a zombie, and that's a completely different story. But you have here these edges. He's just going, where's, where's the place most shadow would fall on the edge of this muscle? I'll put it here. Where's it going to fall down here? I'll put it there and I'll leave this edge part to make the arm look 3D. Okay. So there are two of Rob's techniques and I think I'll go into a third. So another technique that Rob does is this technique here. See this technique here? Usually an artist would draw a line. So we have this here and I'll, I'll just draw over this. Right here, usually an artist would just draw a line like that, right? But what Rob does, he's trying to give it more shape. And so what he does, he does this. See that sort of shape there? He does one down here too. He does this. He does it up here too. He does that. 
You see what he's doing all that? And I'll show you to the side what that looks like. What he's doing, as I showed you over here, I showed you on these muscles, he, he's actually trying to show form. He's trying to show the edge of the muscle, but he's trying to show it when the light is close to it. Okay, so let me let me try and redraw it up here. Got the forearm like this, right? If you got the light source here, right? If it's coming from here and you've got a muscle that runs down this way, the end of the muscle here might be looking like that. Right? Because that's that's showing quite a dark point where shadow is. But up here, you might just do that. Right, you might have an edge of a muscle like that. You might have something like that. You might have something that looks a bit like that. Um, but over here, you still might have that darker thing there, like that. Right. So what he's doing is, as I showed you in red before, he's defining the edges of this muscle, but he's doing it in a way that respects the lighting. Because if you if you do something where it's just dark like this. Well, then technically speaking, you created probably a bigger muscle than that arm muscle really is, and your lighting source is hitting right in the center. But in this case, our lighting source is coming from over here. So it actually doesn't work for the drawing. So if we just get rid of that, his technique is to have an actual, uh, I guess you could say, a mixture of techniques from, from this, and I'll draw it to the side here. Complete black, like that, to a black line, a few lines like that. And then, then he just draws a line like that, and then he draws a line. Right? So that's sort of how his techniques progress. You've got one, two, three, four. From the darkest here, to a little bit less dark, to a lighter shadow near light, to just a line. And you see his rendering of line work, just direct line work, mainly around the face. See in here, he's just doing singular lines, or he does do a little bit of those lines we just looked at there. Okay, so on a face, you might draw like this, and you'll have this brow thing happening like that, where he just draws lines, but then he might do a few of those in there. And he may have that there, that there, where he has like the nose. You may have noticed a lot of those. Stephen Platt used to do those too. I think he probably learned that from Rob. Um, and then you have like the eyebrows coming up like that. Rob always likes to do these kind of faces, like that sort of thing going on where you can see bottom teeth. Um, and so he would have line work go like that. But then he'd also have, I need to, it's a little bit thinner. Maybe here, there, and some shading there like that. Of course you do that sort of thing. very rough just so you get a gist of it and you might actually see sometimes Rob's work he goes up like that and you might do a little thing there like that uh, down here he might do that usually does something along there with some line work too and then a little bit of line work there Classic Liefeld would be to do lines here. Some lines coming up here. And you sort of start to see the gist of the picture, although very quickly drawn. We see, we're seeing, uh, well, we can try and put some other techniques in here because we can try and put the darker black. Right, darker black under the chin. We can even put some darker black there. So we've almost got all the techniques we just practiced, right? We've got the singular line. We've got this sort of rounded line. 
as we get away from the light source, if the light source is here, gradually singular line, that line, then we get this, a few underlines there, and then we get down into solid black, which might even have some line work coming out, out of it, and it might have a bit like that as well. So that would be coming from the lighting, away from the light source, which is here, you would have one, two, three, four, towards the darkness. And you can see how he utilizes those techniques all on this face. Well guys, that's the end of this episode. Stick around for episode two, which will be coming out soon. I'll be doing these regularly now, at least once a week. Uh, and so look forward to rendering with Rob Liefeld, Death by a Thousand Lines, part two. We'll go into more of his cross hatching, uh, a few more of his hair techniques and a few other things. So stay tuned and I'll catch up with you next time.